Hey guys, I'm Koko. Today I wanted to share with you a couple of intermediate tips for RimWorld. Over the years I've created more than a thousand RimWorld videos, and now that RimWorld has finally been officially released, I felt it was appropriate to share with the community what I have learned. If you feel like intermediate tips are not for you, don't worry. I also have beginner and advanced videos coming up soon, so let's jump right in. The first thing I wanted to talk about was standard apparel. That's something we want to focus on. So, you can get to it under assign tab, go under manage outfits and select the outfit you want. So let's say anything. Now you don't want your people to be running around in tether repair, correct? Well, this slider over here lets you do that. Basically, tethered apparel counts as anything that has from 0 to 50% quality on it. So, what you can do is, you guys can equip this if it has at least 51 HP. 51% HP up to 100. That's the slider you do. And whenever it hits 51 or below, they're just gonna go put it somewhere into a stockpile and go equip something else. You can do the same for quality. You can say, hey, I wanna equip only excellent to legendary items. Sure, if you have such wealth, of course you can do. You can also disallow tainted apparel over here if you don't want your people to be cranky about that. But mostly I leave that open. You know, I like my people cranky a bit. So you've been raided again and the nasties actually didn't win as you know expected you're always the winner now you might have some of them down they didn't die so their clothing is still not tainted until they die so what I would also always advise you to do if you want the clothing of course you can go and tell people that are still bleeding that are still not dead yet and that you don't necessarily want to recruit just go strip them you know, just strip them and this clothing over here that got that we got from this guy, as you can see, it's not tainted. Well, this clothing on this guy, let's go strip, let's say this dead guy over here, Mr. Shio. As you can see, his stuff is tainted. So traders will not buy tainted apparel, well, they will buy normal apparel. You can always uh, give this apparel to your people and they will not complain because it doesn't have the tainted debuff. Of course, it might not be the greatest. But sometimes you can get some really awesome items like that from down raiders and it's a worth thing to do. Next I wanted to talk about your defense setup. Now as you might have noticed the turrets might take quite a lot of power to run if you want to run them. And one option is like I have over here is to use a power switch over here. This power switch when turned on will connect all of these and these guys will get power. Now, that also needs one of your colonies to be nearby, so you can flick it, correct? And in that time, maybe the raiders will be already in or something like that. So you need something that's faster. Now what you can do, and it's easy to do, is like I built over here. As you can see, there's tiny power conduit next to all of these. Now, then you don't need the power switch over here. You can just tell, hey, you, go and reconnect. And it's gonna try now over here, reconnect to this one, and it gets power. I can click reconnect a couple of times and eventually it's gonna get over here if I didn't have this bad boy over here it would just instantly connect to this line over here and it would have power same for this one over here now they all have power all I need to do is I can have it paused and I can click and in just that one second the radius would just get wasted because you know I have power you don't get wrecked son Next, we're gonna play with the Forbid and Unforbid tool. Now, that's something very useful that you can do, especially at the start. Under the orders, you have the Forbid and Allow tools. So, what you can do early on when you load in, and you know that all over the world, all over the map, there's forbidden pieces of steel, like over here, like over here, like probably in many other places, here and here and probably more in more places. There's always usually also survival mills, etc, etc. You don't want to go chase them all down, trying to find them, trying to manually click on them and I'll forbid them. Now what you can do is go into the orders, find your allow tool, right click on it, which is gonna unforbid all items. Now, that can be tricky. Sometimes you might want to have some corpses out there back in the like over here that you don't necessarily want your, want your colonists to haul in because they are just not needed. Sometimes a big group of animals will just perish maybe because due to toxic fallout and it's gonna rot like almost instantaneously and you don't want rotten animals to be brought in, correct? 
So that that is not always going to be useful. I rarely actually use it myself because I do prefer to manually click on what I want on Forbidden. But just so you know, it is there. You know, it is there and you can use it. Next thing, paying attention to people's traits. So let's take, for instance, our Hermione over here. If you look at her bio, she's a jogger. That will make her an actually very good hauler. If you have, wanna, if you have a jogger, make them a hauler. I've been talking about night owls in the previous video. So, you know, night owls should be during the night. Uh, she's also pretty, you know, people will like her more. That makes her for a very good recruiter if you want to put her on the prisoners. She can recruit them faster. Let's see, Lumi over here, she's a psychopath. Psychopaths will not get a mood debuff if they butcher people. Now, others will still get a single mood debuff, but if you have a person butchering multiple peoples, multiple people, they will get multiple debuffs. So, it will stack, but if you have a psychopath, it's not like a problem. Just get a psychopath to butcher people. Perfect. Let's look at Hess over here. Hess, she's an undergrounder. As you can see, she has no need to experience the outdoors or light. So there's two possible options for her. She's a good miner, so it's a very good idea to stick her, let's say, over here. There's darkness over here because it's inside the mountain. You know, mine over here. She's not going to have a problem because she's going to be in dark. She's going to enjoy that, right? Also, the other option you can do with the Undergrounder is just stick them out inside and just let them research all day long. Because a lot of time when you have like a bigger base and everything is connected, everything is roofed, especially if you have multiple toxic fallouts happening to you, uh, then you can have some people having cabin fever due to not ever leaving the place. So, Undergrounders like that, you know, would be a good idea to have them, let's say, work on this high-tech bench over here and just research for you. So you got attacked by the raiders and you survived. Now what you can do with them? Well, one thing as we said about the corpses, you just go bury them. But how about we butcher some? I mean, you have your psychopath. How about we butcher some can uh, not cannibals. <laughs> well, maybe possibly cannibals as well. How about we butcher some people? Sure, your other guys will get a debuff. Your psychopath will not. And what do you do with the meat then? Well, over here, on the butcher's table, you can select kibble. You can make kibble. I say always just forbid vegetarian, forbid animal products. You need to use hay. And under meat, you go ahead and you use human meat or insect meat. Those two things give your humans a debuff, so you don't want to use them. But your animals can freely eat it. Of course, they can eat raw meat as well. But any any animal can actually go ahead and eat kibble. So if you if you only have human meat, and only, let's say, your dogs, etc. can eat it. But if you have made kibble, then your Steve boy over here can eat that as well. It's better than eating just raw hay, or better just eating raw human meat. It's better if you make kibble, and thusly you can actually use the meat, because butchering actually gives you also plenty of human leather, that you can use to make hats, to use to make other apparel, and it's also plenty sellable if you want to do that. Next thing I wanted to talk about Blight. Oh, the horror, we got Blight. All of our plants are gonna die. And Blight has a nasty tendency to actually jump between your different growing zones, right? So, what can you do to prevent that? Like over here, I have these growing zones stacked up quite nicely. Over here, there's a bigger distance in between though. So, the chance of this Blight actually jumping on here is smaller. And this blight, if I didn't have this over here, would never actually spread down to my potatoes because it's way too far. So usually I have all of my farms stacked up because it makes easier for all of my growers to actually work on them. But if you really want to prevent blight from spreading fast and rapidly, maybe because you are in the middle of process by shooting uh, some raiders or something, what you can do is just spread your growing zones uh, so there's like four to five thousand between and then blight should never actually spread in between them and uh, only one of your crops will actually get hit and uh, all your food well most of your food should survive thusly so we had a blight now what do we do like normally your plant cutters will go there and cut the plants but then if you have your priorities set up improperly they will start planting right away now usually most people will say hey grow first 
and when the plants are grown, you know, just cut them. So, what Hess is doing right now is growing the plants instead of cutting them first, which means that the what already has been cut and now replanted, the blight can actually go back and spread to it. So what you actually have to do on all of your growers is set up plant cutting first and then growing second. So thusly, they will always go and just cut all the plants that got blighted and then they will grow new ones. That's, that's basically what they have to do. So you can always have maybe a couple of people that only do plant cutting and then a couple of people that only do harvesting but with a small colony it's best to have it spread like this it will it will mean that your people will always go cut the plants and uh, you won't really have to care about more of the blight jumping somewhere else of course that might mean that uh, if all the plants are growing at the same time you're just gonna go cut them all maybe have to go to sleep in between and uh, half of your base will be actually not planted due to them uh, doing all the cutting at the same time but you know that's you know something that you can min max later on but for blight purposes this is what works best so next thing i wanted to talk about again are priorities and this time around doctor priorities now if you have a small colony like this and all you get raided all, all of your people actually get shot so they will all want to go into a hospital bed until they get treated if you have this set up properly like they want to be patients first before actually doing crafting or hauling or anything like that because they will otherwise just bleed out on the job so you have all four of them going into a bed and trying to get healed nobody's gonna get healed because nobody's gonna be there for patching them up now that's why it's important that your doctor patient is set up like this if you have a doctor that you want to go treat people before he treats himself you need to set it like this so this guy is gonna first go doctor all the three other patients and then he's gonna actually go lay in bed now this time you can of course have them patch themselves up which you can actually assign over here self tend but self tending is usually not good so you have anyone that is close to his medical skill or anyone that maybe can do medicine and your guy hasn't been hurt badly then it's probably for the best that you set up that one as a doctor and just manually tell them hey go treat our doctor so our doctor can go and treat you tomorrow again when you maybe get infection or something like that so you got yourself a new colonist right they're awesome but they have this awful gojo's addiction and you don't know what you can do about that because they're just terrible right you know they're gonna break you don't have any money to buy go juice for them and you don't want to fuel their addiction forever so what you can do is something i already started working on over here it's a bit radical but you can do it you can cut off their legs right lumi you're my doctor correct i think so anyway i should check yes so what you can do over here is first go install them peg legs you give them two peg legs and what you can do after that, you just go and tell them to remove the parts. There you go. I already removed the first one. Lumi, go remove the, the second one. And that's gonna be done. She will be without legs. And people that cannot walk will also not break. So what she's gonna do, she's just gonna be unhappily sleeping over here. But she will never be able to break. There you go. She doesn't have legs. She's just gonna stay here. And after she's done with her addiction, you know... Install those brand new bionic legs that you got just for her and she's gonna be absolutely happy because well right now she might not have legs but after that she's not gonna have an addiction. As I said it's a bit you know a bit extreme and it's not something you want to do all the time but you know it's something that you can do for your, some of your colonists. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Don't forget there's two more tips videos coming soon so make sure to check them out. And if you enjoy Let's Plays, there's always at least one new RimWorld video on my channel every day, plus a multiple other videos from a variety of games. Let me know your thoughts on the video in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, Coco out.